Good morning Year 5 and welcome to another week of maths. So this week we are going to have a focus on calculation. Now obviously we have been doing calculation through all the modules we've been doing but this week is a real focus on the methods how we might use different ways to check our answers and how we could do some problem solving as well. So today we're just going to focus on the four main methods of uh, calculation, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. We're going to do one of each and we're going to look at how we use the inverse operation to check our answers. So first of all, here is an example of an addition calculation. So there it is, 362,178 add 124,357. So, first of all, I'm just going to fill in this bar model here because sometimes that can help you with how you, which inverse you use to find, to check your answer. So I'm just going to fill in the information we've got. So we've got two numbers added together and we're wanting to find that one. A good way to check your answer before you've even done it, check if it's in the right ballpark, is to do an approximation. So I'm going to use the rounding skills we did um, last week and I'm going to say I'm going to round this one 362,000 just up to the nearest 10,000 there to 360,000 and I'm going to round this one to 120,000 and then I'm just going to say because I could do that in my head so I've got 360,000 at 120,000 is 480,000. So my answer's got to be around about 480,000. If I come up with an answer that's 57,000, I know I'm way too low. Okay, let's do the calculation then. So I'm just going to model for you the normal method, the column method we use, starting with our ones. Eight ones and seven ones uh, is 15 ones, which is one ten and five ones. Tens now, seven tens and five tens and one ten is 13 tens, which is 100 and three tens. Hundreds, I've got 100, add 300, add 100, which is 500. Thousands, I've got 2,000s, add 4,000s, which is 6,000s. Tens of thousands, I've got 60,000 and 20,000, which is 80,000 or 8 10,000s. And then 100,000s, I've got 300,000s, add 100,000, it was 400,000. Looking at my approximation, that looks about right. So if I was now to write this into my bar model up here we now need to think about how we use the inverse to work out so what we should be able to do now is take this bigger number take away this one and end up with this one or take the bigger number take away that one and end up with that one so the inverse of addition um, is subtraction so I'm just going to do that now and check that I end up with the right answer so I'm going to take away 124,357 so I've got this, I'm taking away this, I should get that as my answer. If I do, I've probably got it right. Okay, ones first. I'm not going to talk you through this because I'm going to do one of these in a minute, but you can check my working as I go. So you know I'm prone to a few mistakes here and there. Okay, 362,178. Yeah, it matches, so that's correct. So there's a few ways you might check the accuracy of your answers, okay? Let's do one for each of the operations and then I'll explain what we're going to do. Okay, so now we've got a subtraction. So this time I'm starting with my total because that's what happens in a subtraction calculation. So that goes there in the bar. And then this one can go either side really. I'm going to put it here. Okay, and a good approximation would be uh, 310,000 take away 150,000 or thereabouts. So 160,000 is my approximation. It should be around about there. Let's do it. Ones first, six take away five is one. Tens, zero tens take away eight tens. I can't do that. I need to exchange one of these hundreds, leaving one behind. Now I've got 10 tens. 10 tens take away eight tens is two tens. 100 take away 100, leaves me with nothing. 7,000 take away 3,000 is 4,000. 10,000 take away five, uh, sorry, 10,000 take away 50,000. Can't do that. I need to, <coughs> to do an exchange, excuse me. 11, th uh, so I've got 11 10,000s take away five 10,000s, leave me with six 10,000s. And then I've got 200,000s take away 100,000s. So I think that's my answer. 
164,021. Let's do the inverse to check. So now looking at my bar model, I should be able to add these two and come up with that answer. Let's just check it. So again, just check my calculation as I go. Make sure I'm not making any mistakes. Okay, and this number and that number match. That's what I started with. So I've got it correct. Hooray. Right. Okay. Multiplication. 478 times 6. Let's approximate first here. So I'm going to round that to 500. 500 times 6. Well, I could do 5 times 6 and then I make it 100 times big, bigger. So 5 times 6 is 30. Make it 10 times bigger, make it 100 times bigger. It's going to be around about 3,000. Okay, if I were to draw it, I'm basically saying that 478 goes in each of these. There are six of them. Obviously, I saved a bit of time by drawing this first. I need to find the answer. So six times eight is 48, which is four tens and eight ones. Seven tens times six is 42 tens. Add those four tens, it gives us 46 tens which is four hundreds and six tenths. Four hundreds times six is twenty-four hundreds. Add those four hundreds gives us twenty-eight hundreds, which is two thousands and eight hundreds. Okay, so I think that's the answer. The approximation looks about right. Let's put it in here. And now we're going to use the bar model to think, okay, how do I check it? Well, really, if I do 2,868 divided by six, we're using the inverse, I should get 478. Let's have a look. Now, I'm going to use short division to do the calculations this week. If you can't remember how to do it, you can always go back and watch the week on division where we went through it. Or, of course, you can do long division as normal as well. OK, so how many sixes uh, am I going to get in 2,000? I'm not going to do them, so I'm going to change those to hundreds. So I've got 28 hundreds. Uh, there's going to be 24 hundreds. It's going to be four in each group. So four times six is 24. And I've got four left. OK, then I'm going to do uh, six. How many? Right, so I've now got 46 tens. So how many would they go into six? Six times seven is 42. Keep leaving me four left. And then I've got 48 ones now. How many sixes in 48 is eight? Matches up. Fantastic. Last one, our favourite division. So I've got 686 divided by eight. So my approximation, well, I know my eight times table, I know that 640 is going to be a multiple of eight because 64 is. So I'm going to round that to 640 divided by eight. 64 divided by eight would be eight. So 640 divided by eight is 80. So my answer is going to be around about 80. If I get an answer that's Lots bigger than that in the hundreds, 300 and something or zero point something, then I know I've gone wrong. OK, so I start with 686. I've divided it into eight equal groups. I don't know how much is in each group. So let's work it out again. I'm going to use short division method. If you want to do the long method, that's absolutely fine. So I've got six hundreds. I can't share that into eight equal groups. So I'm going to take that with the tens and have 68 tens. Well, I already know that eight times eight is 64. I ate and I ate till I was sick on the floor. Eight times eight is 64. So eight go into groups. And I've got four left, which I put into ones. How many eights in 46? Uh, well, I, I know that seven eights are 56. Six eights are 48. Five eights are 40. So I've got five eights are 40 and I've got a remainder. OK, so I think the answer is going to be 85 remainder 6. I've kept it as a remainder, not a decimal. I'd like you to do the same when you do your ones because that's important when we use the multiplication to check. So this time we've got a remainder left. So I'm going to forget the remainder for a minute and I'm going to do 85 times 8. OK, so what we're saying is we could put 85 in each of these, but we'd end up with 6 left on their own. OK, so I'm going to do 85 times 8. OK, 5 eighths are 40. 8 tens times 8 times 8 is 64 tens. Add those 4 tens is 68 tens. And then I add that 6 on because I've got another 6 left, which gives me 686, which is what I started with. Therefore, it's correct. OK, 
So this week, a little bit different. Each day, instead of fluent in five, up until Thursday, you're gonna have some calculations to solve. There's no time limit, and there are three colors. Now they do get gradually harder as you move from left to right. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of uh, ownership of your own learning here. You choose which color you do. Okay, so if you're still not quite sure and you need a little bit of practice, I would go for the orange level. If you want to do something at age-related year five expectation, it would be the green level. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you could do the blue level. So each day at the beginning of the lesson, there will be a slide like this, and I will ask you to pause the video and solve the calculations, and then the answers will come up a bit like Fluent in Five last week. Okay, so good luck with that, and I'll be back tomorrow with the answers.